Good morning. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speakers, Margaret Klein, a member of the class of 2010, and Emily Klein, a member of the class of 2013. Margaret and Emily are proud Brooks alumni for whom athletics played a large role in their Brooks experience and beyond. I count myself very lucky to have been a lacrosse coach during this era of Klein sister dominance. During Margaret's four years at Brooks, she was a member of the soccer and lacrosse teams and also played JV hockey, which was a sport new to her when she came to Brooks. A phenomenal athlete and a fierce competitor, Margaret was beloved by her coaches and teammates. Margaret's advisor and lacrosse coach commented in a letter home her sophomore year that she was a major contributor on a varsity team with high expectations. The letter continued, Margaret grew naturally into her expanded role on the lacrosse team. Always seeking to improve her play, Margaret takes a thinking woman's approach to the game and rarely needs to hear the same coaching point twice. Margaret was a four-year letter winner and also named an academic All-American for lacrosse her junior and senior years at Brooks. Margaret continued her career as a student athlete at Washington and Lee University, where she continued to be a leader on the lacrosse field. During her collegiate athletic career, Margaret played in 79 games with 72 starts and tallied 147 goals and 31 assists for a career 178 points. In her senior season, she was named 2014 Old Dominion Athletic Conference Player of the Year and registered a team leading 51 goals and nine assists that season. Margaret finished her career ranked fourth all time at Washington and Lee for career goals and eighth for career points and was also named to the ODAC all tournament team, first team all ODAC and first team all Chesapeake region. That's a big deal. Similar to her sister, during Emily's four years at Brooks, she was also a member of the soccer and lacrosse teams. Emily's winter commitment varied as she dabbled in basketball, squash, and other activities. She earned all league first team honors in her junior and senior soccer seasons and was an all state selection in her senior year. Emily was named an academic all American after her junior and senior lacrosse seasons. She also earned all league first team honors her senior season for lacrosse. And during this lawn ceremony in 2013, Emily was awarded the Carrie Ann Cater Prize, which is a prize awarded annually by the faculty to that female member of the graduating class who, by her warmth and generosity of spirit to others, by her outstanding contribution to Brooks Athletics, and by her presence alone, has added that precious quality of kindness for which we remember Carrie Ann Cater. Emily continued her career as a student athlete at Colby College as a member of both their soccer and lacrosse teams. She captained the Colby soccer team her junior and senior years and was lacrosse captain her senior year. During her collegiate lacrosse career, Emily played in 65 games with 57 starts and tallied 40 goals and 19 assists for 59 points. During her senior lacrosse season, Emily was selected as an all NESCAC first team honoree and as the NESCAC defensive player of the year making her the first Colby player to earn the Defensive Player of the Year award since its inception. Both of these women are formidable athletes in their own right with impressive stats to boot. But I wish to impart to you all is that when I think about my own children and how they show up on the athletic field, I hope they contribute like the clients. These sisters were absolute workhorses and set an incredible example of what dedication and selflessness means when you're part of a team. We are so fortunate to have Margaret and Emily here with us today. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming them now. Good morning. Thank you all for having us. It's so lovely to be back on campus and such an honor to be speaking to you in chapel today. My name's Emily. My name is Margaret. Kippy Little Day was always a favorite chapel talk for us. When we got to hear from fellow alumni about their experiences at Brooks and beyond, both on and off the field. When we were deciding how we could best honor Kippy Little, there was a clear overarching theme. 
the importance of putting the team ahead of ourselves, and how much our time at Brooks shaped who we are as teammates. Sports were a core part of both my and Margaret's childhood. Whether it was soccer, tennis, swim team, gymnastics, or lacrosse, our weeks and weekends were consumed by back-to-back -back practices for town and club teams and travel to and from tournaments. Even with this as our foundation, my experience at Brooks completely changed and redefined what being a part of a team and what having a team first mentality really meant. It also solidified just how much more fun things are when you're in it for more than just yourself. At Brooks, I was a member of the varsity girls lacrosse team for four years, but I was also proudly a member of girls JV soccer for three and JV ice hockey for four. Each of these teams played a different role in my time at Brooks. Soccer was a sport I had played my whole life, and I was invited to try out for varsity my freshman year. While I didn't make the team, I found an amazing group of girls on the JV team and even declined the invitation to try out for varsity in upcoming seasons. With ice hockey, I did not own a single piece of equipment before I tried out my first season. Two of my other classmates and friends were in the same boat as me, and we literally learned how to skate on the first day. Al Costello had us skating crossovers around the center circle for the entire first hour of practice. By the end of the first week, we were sent into drills, falling all over the place, but it forced us to learn and adapt. With each passing year, other girls started just like us, learning to skate on their first day and rising up through the ranks of the team over the following years. It was a humbling experience, but with practice and reps and a lot of trips and vols, we learned the sport and improved daily through the support of our coach and teammates. I was lucky enough to make the varsity lacrosse team in the spring of my freshman year with four of my other classmates. It was through this, this team that I really began to learn the important foundations of playing a sport at a high level. We trained hard at practice each day with extra conditioning and wall ball practice. The upperclassmen led by example to teach us the culture and legacy of Brooks Lacrosse. And it showed through our successes and wins that season. And while many of these moments are ingrained in my memory, the moments and bonding outside of practice and the sport itself are some of my favorites. It's the bus rides and sing-alongs, the team breakfasts and dinners, coordinating outfits on game days and proudly wearing our uniform skirts through campus, the Monday stretch circles that may have lasted a bit longer than our coaches liking and involved a lot more chatting than stretching that stick out most when I look back at my time on the team. By senior year, we were a mighty group of eight in my class from all different friend groups, but regardless of this, we had such a strong bond from our time together on the team and each of us had our roles, both as players and teammates, that created an important support system for each other and the rest of the underclassmen, which we had learned from the upperclassmen before us. We spanned the field from our leading goal scorers to tireless middies to our backstop and net. It was how we worked together as a group that spurred our success on the lacrosse field and deepened our friendships off the field. Starting freshman year at Brooks, I was lucky enough to have Margaret as a member of the senior class. This meant that most people at school knew me as Margaret's little sister from the second I arrived at soccer preseason, and I was very proud to have that as my unofficial title when I got to campus. I had been a fan of the sidelines of her lacrosse games for the three years prior, where I got a sneak peek into the life of a varsity athlete at Brooks, and I had my first foray into this world during soccer in the fall. But having the chance to play alongside my sister on the lacrosse team far exceeded my expectations. I still vividly remember walking into Mr. Hesse's classroom after lacrosse tryouts freshman year when he delivered the news that I had made the team with two of my best friends, Ren Robinson and Jill Doherty. Walking out to practice that day, matching up with my soon-to-be three-year warm-up partner, Abby Hooper, and crafting our daily handshake is one of my favorite memories from my time at Brooks. I was beyond excited for the chance to be a part of the team I had witnessed and admired over the years. But boy, was I standing on the shoulders of giants. Margaret truly personified the notion of leading by example and fostering a sense of togetherness on the lacrosse team. She went all out of practice every day and expected those around her to do the same. Her and her whole class performed at a level that inherently made the rest of the players push ourselves that much harder. But beyond her skills and performance on the field, she so deeply valued the team and what it meant to be part of something much bigger than herself. Her and her class were fervent believers of our Brooks-specific traditions. This included team breakfast, finished by dining hall cheers on game days, dance parties in the locker room entry before warm-ups, slamming the stop sign as we walked out to the field for home games. The level of camaraderie they fostered had a huge impact on our whole team's performance. 
by Margaret and our seniors projecting these qualities of work ethic and togetherness and encouraging us to do the same, they created an environment that drove our team to be at the top of the league. She and the rest of her class, a group of eight girls who quite literally all graduated um, and continued on to play college sports, showed me what it meant to put, both put in the hard work and act as a supportive teammate. Even as a nervous freshman, I thought of every other girl on this team as a friend and someone I could stop and say hi to in the link. This shaped my own approach to my role on both teams moving forward and taught me how crucial team relationships were. I knew I wanted every single future player and underclassmen to feel the same sense of pride and belonging as I had. After Brooks, I moved on to Washington and Lee University in Virginia, where I walked on to the women's lacrosse team and played all four years. I had met the coach during my recruiting process, but had not made the final cut of the 2014 recruiting class, and instead was given the option to try out. When I arrived on campus in the fall, I was nervous and unsure if I should follow through with tryouts. I felt unprepared. Admittedly, I had skimped quite a bit on the summer workout packet, and I was worried I had no chance of success. So I set up a meeting with the coach, and I told her of my hesitations. Her response, it's your decision, but I think you should try. The worst case scenario is that you don't make the team, but you'll, wa you'll walk away knowing 25 new women you may not have ever met otherwise. And she was right. I met 25 amazing women who became my mentors and some of my closest friends to this day, and I officially made the team after the fall season. Each year, the senior class decided a word or phrase for the season. It was something we would cheer before games, print on signs in the locker room, and say to each other as encouragement and motivation during tough moments. All in, united, and relentless were a few examples. Our senior class was brainstorming for the 2014 season. We were in need of a major reset after a difficult previous season. We landed together on the phrase, I am third, which in its original definition stands for God first, country second, I am third. We tailored these first two lines to better fit our situation. As a senior class, we redefined it as the WNL lacrosse program and its legacy first, this season's team second, and I am third. Not only did this become our phrase for the 2014 season, but has remained a key part of the culture at the, of the WNL women's lacrosse program and is still used to this day. I am third is the perfect embodiment of what it means to be on a team. It outlines the important act of putting your teammates, your coaches, and the program ahead of yourself in order to succeed as a group and meet your shared goals. Like Margaret, my experiences on the soccer and lacrosse fields at Brooks are what prepared me to compete and succeed on my college teams. After graduating from Brooks, I was recruited to play for the lacrosse team in the spring and walked onto the soccer team in the fall at Colby College. My time in Colby Athletics really solidified that every member of the team, regardless of your tenure, or whether you're a starter or on the sidelines that day, is critical and core to the success of the team and had a key part to play day in and day out. For example, being on the sideline during a lacrosse game was one of the most important roles of all. We took pride in being one of the loudest and most boisterous sidelines in the league. If I hadn't lost my voice by the end of the game due to nonstop cheering, I was not doing it right. As some of you will come to learn, being on a college team is a huge commitment on all fronts and it takes an enormous amount of physical energy, mental toughness, and most of all, time. We spent countless hours together as teammates, but this is what allowed us to get to know each other at such a deep level, to the point of feeling like family, which remains true to this day. On and off the field, I knew that every one of those girls believed in me and would have my back in any situation. I remember getting ready for my first game of the season as a freshman on the team. We were playing Trinity, who was the NESCAC and national champion the year prior. So the stakes were high. My coach came up to me at breakfast in the hotel and told me I'd be in the starting lineup that day. I'm not exaggerating when I say I nearly threw up my bagel on the spot, but um, it was my teammates who told me that I could do it and hyped me back up and helped me get past my nerves to be ready for the game. This level of support didn't end at Colby though. We're continuing to be there for each other in our personal lives and through our careers. After I graduated, I ended up working at a company with two of my previous soccer and lacrosse teammates. They helped me immensely through the job search process and as I started navigating the workforce after school. Our level of friendship went so much deeper than our experiences on the field and it's something I'm beyond grateful for to this day. Today, we are no longer part of our traditional sports teams like we were during our high school and college years, but we use the many skills and lessons learned in our daily lives. 
After graduating college, I was looking for a new athletic outlet to fill the very large void that lacrosse left behind. One day, one of my best friends and college teammates, who was struggling with the same thing, called me out of the blue and said, should we run a marathon? My response without thinking was immediately, yes. And so began a new hobby and challenge. Though it is seen as an individual sport, running takes the same time, dedication, discipline, and accountability that we had learned from our many years on teams. And beyond that, I was able to do it alongside one of my now lifelong friends. Though we didn't live in the same city and it was a bit different from practicing on the same field every day, we would constantly check in on training and keep ourselves on track. And on race day, we pushed together to make it over the finish line. My friend tied up her shoes after that race, but I was hooked. And once Emily graduated from Colby, I brought her along with me. In 2019, Emily and I ran the Chicago Marathon together, which was her first marathon and my third. Again, we didn't live in the same city, but virtually trained together, set similar pace and time goals, and made sure we were prepared for race day. We ran every step of that race together, pushing and encouraging each other, and we both exceeded our goals. Since Chicago, we've run the Berlin Marathon together, and we've each run races on our own. For those races, while we weren't as much a part of the full preparation process, we've been each other's cheerleaders throughout, and especially on race days. Teamwork today is not just seen in our lives through athletics. While these values were instilled in us on the field and on the road, we've also, they've also played a crucial role in our work life and careers. Being able to work together toward a common goal with people from all walks of life all different backgrounds and all different skill sets is a lifelong skill and practice that goes far beyond our time on the field. If you take anything away from today, we hope it can be this. Prioritizing the team is about selflessness and humility. It's about celebrating the successes of the team and others as much as your own and being willing to make sacrifices for the betterment of the team. This holds true for situations beyond the athletic fields from the classroom to clubs and in life after school. Find ways to empower the other students and teammates around you. The mutual respect you will build and the relationships you will make through teams of all kinds at Brooks are what will matter most. Thank, Thank you. you.